What happens if you take a camera mounted in the cockpit of an aircraft? Fly that aircraft from Zurich in Switzerland all the way to Sao Paulo, Brazil. When you do it at night on a globe, while that globe is also rotating on its own axis. What do we expect to see? And this is an interesting question that Ben tried to answer on his YouTube channel Taboo Conspiracy. And although he failed spectacularly in his attempt, both in understanding how an aircraft works and also in how a globe actually rotates around its own axis, this question on its own, well, is kind of a challenge to answer because you have two separate movements. One is, of course, the Earth rotating around its own axis, creating a North Celestial Pole and a South Celestial Pole. There's two points in the sky that everybody can observe where all the stars appear to rotate around. And on the other hand, we do have left and right of us two separate uh, poles that also appear to rotate, one clockwise, the other one counterclockwise, while we are adjusting for the curvature of the Earth. So looking in front of us, we would see the stars rise. But of course, we have those two separate rotations, two movements that we need to combine. This is not really an easy task to do. And if we have a look at the footage, what we see is actually stars that go from left to right in a somewhat arc-like uh, shape. And later in the video, we can actually see that there is a point straight ahead where everything appears to rotate around and this is a rather peculiar effect. So to better understand multiple rotations happening at once, maybe we need a little bit of field study. And I was thinking about like these, these roller coasters where you go from left and right and make loopings and stuff. Um, but maybe uh, that's a bit too far-fetched, isn't it? Well. same time. So let's find another one. Let's try this one. Well, it was a dark ride, so I didn't see that much. <laughs> it was fun. It was oh, lots of fun. So yeah, I was well aware of the fact that loopings and corkscrews are not rotations combined at the same time. But it was fun nonetheless and I had a great day with my kid. But uh, on a more serious note, it's best if we build a 3D model where we not only account for the curve of the Earth, like Ben tried with his simulation, his flight simulation on Google Earth, we need the rotation of the Earth too, and we need to be able to manipulate this. So uh, over here we can open Blender, and we delete everything that's in there. We can add a sphere with the right dimensions, and I use 6.371 here as its radius. And then we can add a map on top of it. So that's a nice texture. And then we need to add a camera and we place it about 10 kilometers higher than the surface. So that must be at a 6.381 uh, for uh, X or Y or Z. You can actually choose it. Then we reorient the camera so that the earth is of course uh, at, its, uh, at the bottom of the, of the camera. We can have a quick look uh, over there. So that works. And then we add a flight path and we link the camera to the flight pad. And then also we introduce an axis of rotation and our entire model needs to be able to be rotated um, on that axis, which runs through the North and South Pole. When we all have all of this, what we can do is simulate the flight. And we start a sequence of 705 frames where every frame stands for one minute. And if we add them all up, we end up with an 11 hour and 45 minute flight, which, which is something that I found online from Zurich to Sao Paulo, Brazil. During that time, the Earth rotates, what is it, about 176 degrees. 
so you yeah you need to figure it out that in one day you have a 360 degrees um, so the flight doesn't take a full day and in fact the aircraft uh, only flies just over half the speed uh, of the Earth's rotation of course the Earth rotates once per day the aircraft can manage barely to take uh, to fly around to the Earth in, in like two days so the the effect that we will see in the render the effect by the Earth's rotation is actually twice as present as the uh, effect as a result of the correction uh, for the curve and I believe that this is some uh, somewhere that, that, that Ben failed to understand it because in his simulation he only accounted for the curve correction and he didn't introduce any rotation of the earth and people have explained it to him in the comment section but he still like pushes it away and he says like no it's not that important the effect isn't there but if we have a look at those those two effects so for example we we stop the Earth's rotation and we take the flight, this is the result. And indeed, we see the stars rise from behind the horizon. Now, if we stop the flight, and we are still in the Northern Hemisphere, for example, but we start the rotation of the Earth, we can see, of course, that everything is rotating around in a point invisible in the frame. It's on the left and it's below the horizon. If we fly a bit further, well, well, we don't fly, we just teleport to slightly over the equator, we can see that we have this point slightly above the horizon, at the left side of the frame. And if we go even further, and this is, I believe, uh, all the way to, to Brazil, we can see that there is a point high up in the sky. Now, if we play both movements at the same time, like this, then the result is very interesting. Because what we see is that there is a point of rotation below the horizon. We don't see it and it's right ahead of us. As if the South Celestial Pole, the, the clockwise rotation, has shifted to the right, while the stars that are around the South Celestial Pole are still to the left. What we can see during the flight is that this point of rotation moves up, but the stars that were around that point don't move up that fast actually they are some are, are rising some are uh, are dropping and it's as if this point of rotation is actually wandering over the field of stars this is because well the um, the aircraft is reorienting itself in relation to the axis of rotation of the earth and since we are combining two different rotations we get a new one a unique one which depends on the direction that you're flying at and actually also the speed that you're flying at and everything uh, becomes so beautifully apparent when we do these star trails so um, it took my computer a while to actually render this but I am planning to do this for uh, some couple of other flights because it's just way too interesting so what we see in the footage and what we see in the simulation is pretty damn similar. And yet Ben and all the other flat earthers in his comment section fail to see this. So I do hope that this simulation and uh, the stabilization that I did on the original footage here uh, actually sheds some new light and gives him some new understanding. Maybe he's even going to delete his failed attempts to explain this on a globe. And maybe he even tries to, to make it work on a flat earth, who knows? Um, in fact, on a flat earth we don't expect to, the stars to rise or set at all. Actually, we expect all the stars to be visible all the time. Or never, because the sun should be above the horizon all the time. Uh, I understand why he doesn't like to try it on a flat earth. I also hope that he stops making new videos, because he makes even more mistakes in those new videos. Now, if you are wondering what it looks like if we go from the uh, South America to Europe in the opposite, of course, we are flying northeast this time. And uh, of course, we will have on our left side a counterclockwise rotation as a result of the uh, rotation of the Earth. And on our left hand, 90 degrees uh, from our left hand, we will see um, a, a counterclockwise rotation as a result of our flight path. If you want to know how that looks like, 
and if you want to know if there is actually um, actual footage that comports with it or not stay tuned just subscribe to my channel I will make um, I will put out a video in the future hopefully near future where I do the same for the opposite flight and see if that makes any sense until then take care bye bye